Hello, my friend. And I am giving you a money back guarantee. This is the best video you will see today on YouTube or Facebook. Why? Because I have so many personal stories to share with you all. Why Kris Jenner made me cry this week. What happened between me and her son, Rob Kardashian. The drama I had with Misha Barton. And I'm throwing in Paris Hilton for good measure as well. Plus some big celebrity stories. I'm talking Wendy Williams. I'm talking Bella Thorne. Some of my favorites are peppered throughout. Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, Halsey, Billie Eilish. And I'm giving you the scoop on some YouTubers. Shane Dawson, Tana Mojo, and perennial Perez-shiz fabe, Trisha Paytas. But I need to start off by letting you know, <laughs> no, my son, no, my daughter, no, my other daughter, none of them did my makeup. I did it today, and I love it. <laughs> Even though it looks bad, it's a look, okay? It's, it's, it's an aesthetic that I am feeling. <laughs> I don't know makeup, but it put me in the best mood. And if you care, my shirt says mask for mask. I thought I had to wear this with this. The lipstick I genuinely love. I'll wear this lipstick again. I probably won't do the eye thing because I look like a raccoon and not in a edgy Kristen Stewart kind of way, just in like a animated character or bank robber kind of way. Um, the lipstick is by Miss Fame, the RuPaul's Drag Race alum. She did her own line of lipsticks and I love it. And I didn't even know what it was called. I just saw the color and I loved it. And I looked and it's called Fame Whore. How appropriate. So shout out to Miss Fame. She sent me this. And the eyes are actually liquid lipstick that I put on my eyes. <laughs> It's NYX Liquid Suede, because I don't have any eye stuff. I'm not on the PR list. All right, I need to start off by explaining to you what really went down behind the scenes at the Hills premiere this week. You may have seen all of the photos and Instagram stories and Snapchat videos that I posted yesterday. Well, Earlier in the week, I let you guys know first that your boy is going to be on one episode of The Hills, the best this season. I believe it's episode two, unless they change it. And let me tell you, they've been filming so long. They have so much material that makes me feel pretty confident that they're going to have really good stuff in the show. So it was <laughs> a weeknight. And I have issues with going out on weeknights just because I don't love doing it that much as much as I used to because I've got three kids. I wake up so early every day. I wake up at 5.43 a.m. during the week and not much later on the weekend. So it takes something special to get me to go out during the week. I went by myself because I didn't want to feel like I had to entertain a friend. I got there. I saw Natasha Bedingfield. We were chatting before we did the red carpet. I did the carpet. I saw Spencer and Heidi there and we chatted before I even saw Natasha, before I even did the carpet, I ran into Misha Barton, who is one of the castmates on the upcoming season of The Hills. And as soon as she saw me, she <laughs> went running away, scurrying away, could not have run away faster. I have that effect on some people. And I wasn't wearing this. <laughs> so it was great to be there. Variety interviewed me and wrote an article with my name in the headline and the quote that I gave in the headline too. It was so major. Thank you to Variety for including me in such a substantial way. I appreciate you. And thank you to MTV for inviting me out as well. I had a good time for all of the five minutes that I was at the party. I don't lie, I wasn't there that long. I went straight from there to another party, and I'll get to that in a second. But first, a little bit more about The Hills. Stephanie Pratt, whom I did not see last night, uh, she must have arrived late. I did also meet for the first time Lala Kent. She was there with Randall Emmett, her fiance. 
Uh, Stephanie revealed in a new interview that her feud with her brother, Spencer, has caused her to be hospitalized a few times. She didn't elaborate. When asked about that on the red carpet, Spencer Pratt says that he's got nothing but love for his sister and that it's all positive vibes and nobody's going to take away that positive energy. And honestly, I agree with him. I really want these people that I know to have a comeback because I'm sure they saw their fellow peers in the Jersey Shore cast have that second chance at making money and being on television regularly, which is so beneficial. It's one of my goals in life that I've yet to accomplish, but I won't stop working at my goal amongst other goals that I have. And I think it'll do well, I hope. Are you gonna watch? Let me know in the live chat and the comments down below. All right, I mentioned that after the Hills party, I went to another event I went to a Paris Hilton party, which thankfully was in the same area. It was in Hollywood. And the Hills party was at this restaurant lounge club called Liaison, which used to be the iconic Le Du. So I get to the red carpet at the Paris event, which is at the, was at this restaurant called Clio. And it was for her new app. It was called, it's called The Glam Life. I, I should have called them to do my makeup. <laughs> but then it would have taken time and money and I'm cheap. And this was free for me to use and do. Uh, on the red carpet, I posed for some photos and I was basically attacked verbally. This photographer repeatedly was crapping on me for my green beard. In person, to my face. I get it. Not everybody likes it. And you know what? You don't have to like it. I like it. I did it for me. I did it because I wanted to, because it made me happy, makes me happy. It was something I had never done before. And how exciting and cool is that to say, oh, at 41 years old, I'm still able to do things for the first time that I've never done. That really put me in such a bad mood. Anyways, I get inside and of course Paris isn't there. I got there around 8.30 and her event started at 7.30. She was very fashionably late. Eventually she did get there, couldn't be nicer, was genuinely happy to see me. I was genuinely happy to see her as well. Before I saw Paris, somebody who got there early-ish was Kris Jenner. And if you didn't see the photos that I posted yesterday, I was wearing a shirt, a t-shirt of me, of different me's, different looks of mine, which by the way, I had to buy. Somebody is selling a bootleg Perez Hilton shirt, which I'm not bothered by. Maybe I should be bothered by it. I'm not really that bothered by it. Maybe I shouldn't say that. I'm very bothered by that. No, I'm not. I'm not. I wish they would have just sent me a free one. I had to buy it on this web store where I saw it. Anyways, one of the me's was a photo that the paparazzi took of me when I was wearing this Kim Kardashian sweater with her iconic crying face. So I'm wearing this Kim Kardashian on my shirt and Kris Jenner is there. I had to go up to her even though I hadn't seen her in years. And I was nervous, afraid that she might rip me a new one. And Kris Jenner said something to me that made me cry. First of all, she was very nice. Could not have been nicer also. Even if it was fake nice. Well, you know what? She didn't have to be nice, but she was nice. So fake or genuine, I don't care. I think she liked that I was wearing a Kim on my shirt. And we just were catching up and talking because I've known her a long time and I know the girls. And we were talking about life and I was telling her my, about my life and what's going on now. And 
was speaking about my mother and she said, I'm going to pray for your mother. And when, uh, or I, she might have even said, I'm going to deeply pray for your mother. And I just was staring her and looking at her and she was so sincere. And that really, I cried. It was such a beautiful moment. I wasn't sobbing or anything. I played it off real cool. But, you know, when you go through something awful, like a parent getting sick, and if you don't know, my mom had cancer, which she had to have two operations for. It was vaginal cancer. And she also had a prolapsed bladder that also needed to be not reconstructed, but corrected. And we had other stuff happen this year. Um, it's been a lot. I'm still processing. I'm still dealing. And when you go through a lot, anything can trigger you. Things are still raw. As we talked about earlier this week with Ariana Grande performing in Pittsburgh, the hometown of her ex, Mac Miller. And I've also said this repeatedly, okay? I have said this repeatedly in video and on my podcast. I've said all of those girls and Kris Jenner, they are super nice. They, to my knowledge, or to me, or just me, they don't have a reputation for being mean, cruel, nasty, awful, difficult to work with, or anything like that. I've had issues with just Kardashian Jenner fatigue in the past. I've had issue with just having an unsavory taste in my mouth with just some of them and, and you know, just being sold things and materialism and extravagance and this and that and the other. But overall, I like them. I've always liked them. And I like that they want to be talked about. And I like that they're human and evolve and grow. I mean, even Kim Kardashian, even on my podcast earlier this week, I was applauding her for going to the White House to speak to Donald Trump about an issue dear to her heart. That's prison reform and not just prison reform, helping ex-inmates, once they've been released, be reintroduced to society in a productive way. So what's wild too, and I doubt she knew this, or maybe she did. Earlier that day, before the Hills party, before the Paris party, before I saw Kris Jenner, I had a back and forth with Rob Kardashian on Twitter. And I had tweeted out a story that we wrote about his health journey. I didn't even at him. I just hashtagged Rob Kardashian. So either he's following me and I'm not aware, or he did a search or somebody replied to my article and tagged him. He saw it and said, thank you. My initial tweet was, take it step by step. Don't expect too much too quickly. And he said, thank you. This, well, maybe I'll read it so I don't misquote. Um, I was being really genuine with this guy because I've struggled with my weight. Very oh, annoying. Sorry. Having been having Instagram issues lately. Okay. Where is it? Here we go. Okay. I've struggled with my weight. I've been very open about that. And I genuinely want to help people. Here we go. I just wanted to move this here so that I could read it. Um, I said, don't expect too much too quickly, Rob. Slow and steady truly does win the race. Be consistent. And then he replied saying, I agree with you on this one. And then a smiley face and that emoji and that emoji again and the blue heart sign. And then I responded to him agreeing with me saying, the best advice I can give you is don't weigh yourself. Don't be ruled by or obsessed with a number. Just be consistent with your healthy eating and being active and you will get results. You got this. And then he said, yes, I don't weigh myself yet, LOL. And I really don't care about the numbers. Just want to be healthy and that's all. Thank you for your encouraging words. I appreciate you. I was being 110% genuine, sincere, caring and wanting to help Rob Kardashian. 
And then I ran into his mother and she was lovely and gave me a really touching, beautiful moment. You know, it just reminds me that I think people, I think people are inherently good. And people ultimately, most, not, not everyone, and like not 100% of people clearly, but I think people want to see other people win and people want the best for others. And Thank you, Kris Jenner. That was really beautiful of you and it really touched me and you're amazing. And thank you, Paris, to uh, you and your team for inviting me out. It was nice to have a, a couple hours, like an hour and a half. <laughs> the whole shebang wasn't that long. I probably was gone less than two hours. Got in the car, uh, took a, r a ride there, lift, I don't use Uber, took a lift there, did the Hills party, went to the Paris Heart party, and then came home and wasn't gone that long. Well, I'm not done with the Kardashian Jenners yet. Another new clip has been released for this Sunday's explosive Kylie, Tristan, Jordan, Chloe drama. And in it, we um, see Kylie saying that she spoke to Jordan and saying that she was scared of her. I love the drama. Uh, and uh, also Kim alleging that Tristan's other woman, not really, his one night girl, uh, Jordan Woods, never apologized. That's what Kim says. I think Jordan says she's apologized, but who are you gonna believe? Also in more Card Jenner news, Kylie is in talks to sell 51% of her cosmetics company to Cody, a big cosmetics giant, and the dollar amount for 51% of Kylie Cosmetics is $600 million. You know all of those figures about her being a billionaire? Those were never true. Her company may have been valued at about that, but that doesn't mean she was personally worth that. Now, if she sells 51% of her company for $600 million after taxes and the business partners and managers and this and that, and the other, after everybody gets their cut, let's say of 600 million, she gets 200 million. If you just get 200 million cash and you do nothing with that money, every year you're gonna be earning What's the percentage? Like, um, if you put it in a 2% government account, to what's 2% of $200 million? $2 million? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Insane. When you get that wealthy, your money just makes you money. <laughs> Isn't that the goal? <sighs> I'm not there. Also, Kendall Jenner has beefed up her security because law enforcement has lost track of one of her stalkers. They are unable to locate John Ford, this 38 year old dude who has broken into her house multiple times. And that just triggered my mind and it got me thinking of how much the Kardashian Jenners spend every year. Yes, they make a ton of money, and yes, their money makes money, but they must have such a high cost of living. Their operating cost must be millions of dollars a year. I mean, just security alone must be at least the very minimum hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And that's important because they're very famous, all of them. Oh, God, more money, more problems. More money, you gotta earn more money. <laughs> All right, speaking of the Car Jenners and this Sunday's episode, Jordan Woods was spotted. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch this up because you know what? Why not? Jordan Woods, I'm gonna keep evolving it as the video goes on. Jordan Woods was spotted in a party with Kim Kardashian's ex and infamous scene partner, Ray J. Get that attention, Jordan Woods. All right, in more reality TV news, 
all of the love and healing to Lisa Vanderpump. We've just found out that her mother passed away suddenly in the UK. Yes, Lisa's mother was in her 80s, but still, she's been through so much in the last 12 to 14 months. Her brother died. She had a really difficult time filming with the housewives, and now her mom has passed. Filming on Vanderpump Rules has been suspended, and hopefully they can give her a good amount of time, or they can just resume filming without her. Unless she wants to film, and that'll make her feel better, a distraction, but let's just send her all of the love. You are loved, Lisa Vanderpump. All right. In more reality TV news from Lisa Vanderpump to another housewife, Erica Jane, she posted a fully nude backside photo on Instagram yesterday. Like, I saw into her crack. Those housewives need to up their game to be talked about. On the East Coast, uh, housewife Portia Williams has dumped her fiance, Dennis McKinley. We all saw this coming. They have been unfollowing each other on Instagram and dealing with rumors of this and rumors of that for a while now. So the very latest report that they have broken up should come as no surprise, but girl, Portia, this is for the best. My reputation's never been with so. You must like me for me. This is for the best. A better person, man or woman, will come along, okay? Have faith. Because I gotta have faith, faith, faith. I gotta have faith, faith, faith. Wrapping up our housewives coverage, Candy Burris, her husband, Todd, has found himself getting a lot of attention because he went to a strip club with his 23-year-old daughter. And a lot of people thought that was inappropriate. Do you? I don't. I think that's fun. If my kids wouldn't be embarrassed to go to a strip club with me, I'd love to go to a strip club with them. Or probably not the club. I would not want to go to a club with my kids because I don't find drinking or dance. Maybe maybe if it was like an early thing and they played music I liked, like Madonna or disco, I could do that, or like a Sunday afternoon thing. I'm down with that with my kids, but at least the strip club, there's entertainment, you know? I would see a, a late night burlesque show with my kids or whatever, there's no difference. Maybe just the strippers work harder. <laughs> I love me some strippers. I had no issue with that. That seemed like much ado about nothing. All right, I'm gonna get to Wendy Williams, but before that, I want to shout out some Special Fram members. Hello, Valerie Michaels. I love you. Valerie Michaels is awesome. And hello, Susan Marie. You are a superstar. Susan Marie and Valerie Michaels. Mwah. Okay. On to Wendy Williams. I had a feeling something like this was going on. According to reports, specifically, the new issue of Us Weekly claims that Wendy Williams is not in a good place and spiraling out of control, saying that loved ones think she has fallen off the wagon. Her ex-con 27-year-old boyfriend some would argue, is not a good influence. She's also been very erratic on Instagram, posting very unflattering photos that made me question, like, why? What is going on here? This is what happens. Addicts, which she said has said she is, relapse, and then... It can take a lot to get back on and stay sober. Sending Wendy all of the strength. You are loved too, Wendy. You are loved. Okay. 
uh, from Wendy Williams to, excuse me, just burped, an update on Bella Thorne. I had a very interesting take on all of the Bella Thorne drama, and I was maybe not surprised, maybe I was surprised, but a lot of you agreed with me. While we could agree with most of what Bella was saying, we, or me, thought that she was definitely acting when she made her very emotive, crying, angry videos towards Whoopi Goldberg. And all of this because Bella had some private photos leaked or attempted to be leaked by an extortionist, the hacker. After all this went down with Whoopi, several celebrities from Zendaya to Lucy Hale to Dove Cameron and more, both privately to her and publicly expressed support. And of course, Bella Thorne needed to let us know about this. She even shared publicly about her private conversation with Zendaya. Did she ask Zendaya beforehand, hey, can I let everybody know what you told me privately or what we spoke about privately? She shared all of this on Instagram, just like or why she did everything in the first place. I think not everything, but a lot of the reasons she was acting, a lot of the reasons she, she did what she did and how she did it was for attention. Same reason she was letting us all know about all of her support from her girlfriends. And you know what? I don't knock her. She's a social media star more than an actress. She has said that herself. She makes more money doing social media than she does acting. So good on you, Bella Thorne. Speaking of the Bellas, Bella Hadid has turned off her comments on Instagram because of stupid people and the hate that she was getting over that stupid airplane airport photo, which was so stupid. Ay, uh, yay, yay. You guys, I'm excited because I am now going to let you into my world. Oh, yes, I am. I've got to make sure this doesn't touch the black because I don't want this to be messed up because I want to use that lipstick again. Okay, one of my favorite things to do, I have a few go-to friends that I text throughout the day, every day, talking pop culture. They are Chris Booker, my podcast co-host, which if you haven't listened to our podcast ever or recently or the latest one that just came out yesterday, you can listen to the Perez Hilton podcast with Chris Booker on iTunes or directly at perezpodcast.com. Another one of my besties that I text throughout the day is my friend Mike. And another one is my friend John. And I'm going to share with you all some of the things that we've been privately texting recently. And I'm about to pull a Zendaya, a Bella Thorne, because I have not asked their permission. Oops. But these are just like random thoughts I have in my head. So, inside Perez's brain, what he talks about with his friends. Text I sent. I'm surprised Billie Eilish hasn't popped up on anybody else's song since she blew up. Yes, she was on a song with Khalid, but that was before she became Billie Eilish. Since then, you would think she'd be doing a lot of collaborations because that is the world we live in now. Everybody's collaborating all the time with everybody else, but Billie hasn't, and I think that's a smart strategy. She and her team have done a phenomenal job of cultivating this sense of mystery around her, and I love it. On the flip side, Taylor Swift is very opposite that this era, and is doing so much press and promo. This week, Taylor has phoned into so many radio stations. And yeah, that's not hard work, but I appreciate the effort. You go, promo queen. Her new again friend, Katy Perry, has done zero promo for her new song, N Never Really Over. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. I'm still not warming up to it. I don't hate it. I just think it's fine. I like the Katie, the Miley Cyrus Mother's Daughter song better, even though I don't love that one either. Um, 
And then I had a light bulb go off and you know, maybe that's also a strategy and approach for Katie not to do any promo. Cause a lot of people don't like her. Public perceptions changed on Katy Perry. They find her annoying or this or that or the other. So that's also a calculated move, but she could at least perform the song and not do an interview. But then again, if you're Katy Perry and you do a performance on GMA or Ellen or whatever, there's kind of the expectation that you will chat. We'll see what happens there. Also, it occurred to me that Halsey's new song, well, we talked about that yesterday, duh. Um, that, that was yesterday, I had a brain fart. Uh, uh, that, that That's what prompted me to do this today because that's one of the things that I texted my friends yesterday. Today I texted my friends Halsey on the cover of Rolling Stone, which if you haven't seen, she looks amazing. Oh no, okay, good. Oh, did I get it? No, it's still, it's still good. It's still good. She looks amazing <laughs> on the cover of Rolling Stone. Very natural, like me. All right. Also, I randomly saw a photo of Tana Mojo. <sighs> Listen, I have no issue with smoking marijuana or promoting it, but I don't know. She just, she's about to turn 21 and was smoking a bong and dressed in some bondage or leather or just um super sexy outfit just i didn't like it it just felt so try hard not that i i'm not slut shaming or anything it just felt so desperate <laughs> i honestly would have preferred just nude just give me the nude <laughs> like erica jane <laughs> all right on to more wacky news bachelor alum melissa rycroft has shared her story of going to the Dominican Republic recently and not being well. She got back to America and has been having major issues, major stomach issues. She went to the doctor and I'll have the link down below so you can read more in her words. And it's, it's kind of like this epic novella an ongoing saga with her health. She got super sick in the Dominican Republic. A jajite. All right, in more news of wackiness, that Keith Rainier, the leader of that cult, NXIVM, has been found guilty of all charges against him and he does face life in prison where he belongs. All right, I'll get to Shane Dawson in a second, but first... When I got home last night, I somehow came across this, I know how, somebody emailed me, a reader emailed me, which I read emails that y'all send. A website reader emailed me the link to this article that this woman wrote about what you should tell somebody that's dying. And this woman had her eight-year-old son die. And then I started to read it and I got halfway through it when I found out that she told her eight-year-old son when the doctor told her that he was gonna die, that there was nothing else they could do, she told him he was gonna die. I had to stop reading then. I just, if I had an eight-year-old, maybe not with a 13-year-old or maybe even with a 13-year-old, I don't know. I clearly don't know what I would do until I'm in that situation, but I just don't think I would. I don't think I would tell. What would you do? Would you tell an eight-year-old they were gonna die if you knew they were gonna die? I would want them to feel comfort and peace and just be always with me and know that I'm always gonna be with them. I'm just gonna stop talking now. All right, on to Shane Dawson. I know that many of you are eagerly anticipating a new video from him. It's been a while since he's uploaded one. Maybe he will upload it today or he already has by the time I'm making this and I just haven't seen it. But word has gotten back to me. Well, not any insider information. I just saw this. He 
teased on Instagram story that the next video he's going to post is not his long in the works beauty series, but some conspiracy video instead, which I won't watch. I don't care for conspiracy videos. They're not for me. But I'm sure it'll do really well. And a lot of people love conspiracy videos. Okay, on to Britney Spears, an update there. Her team has unequivocally denied those allegations that they are deleting positive comments from her Instagram, calling that absurd, as I told you all a few days ago. Also, more music-related news, Beyonce's father says that Beyonce had more success in the music industry because she was lighter skinned than Kelly Rowland. But Kelly suffered discrimination because of her skin color or darkness. Okay, yeah, I absolutely buy that. And maybe she would have done better too had she sung more in Destiny's Child. Maybe if it wasn't just Beyonce with two backup singers, Kelly could have shined more and had a thriving solo career like Beyonce. Just maybe. <laughs> All right, in more music related news, brand new music from Mac Miller on a song featuring Sia. If you haven't heard it yet, the link will be down below as everything always is so you could read see or hear more <laughs> some tv news demi moore is going to be appearing on a tv show i think it's her first time as a series regular on a tv show for the usa network it's an adaptation of the book brave new world so congratulations to you also trisha paytas I don't even know what videos she's posted because I'm a busy person. And as I was talking about, I've had quite the week, but I came across some interesting Instagram stories of Trisha and in them, she was stripping, which she's been doing a lot of lately. Good on her, feeling herself. I'm all for it. And she was also talking about mental health issues, which I love. And I love that she went from one to the other because that's real life. You can be feeling yourself one moment and then the other, you could be incredibly down. So I love that Trisha was using her platform for that. And finally, if you have not read this one story of this woman whose mother-in-law showed up to her wedding in a wedding dress, oh my God, it is the one of the best reads of the week. I will have the link down below. You gotta check it out. You've also got to subscribe to my newsletter, PerezNewsletter.com. Also get cameos from me at cameo.com slash Perez Hilton. Also, sign me up for some makeup PR lists. I wanna get makeup and do more silly things like this. My mailing address is 8506 West 3rd Street. That's 8506 West 3rd Street, number 101, Los Angeles, California, 90048, Perez Hilton. Follow me on Instagram. Follow my The Perez Hilton YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, all of the accounts, the personal one, the website one, and just, I love you. I hope you smiled. Holy schmoly, what a long video today is, but I, I think this was worth your time, wasn't it? Wasn't this everything you wanted it to be? It was for me. Group hug. Oh, I will see you guys maybe tomorrow. Maybe. 
Adiós. ¡Muah!